Hello everyone and welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2. In a previous video I had put together this shuttle and flight tested it with jet engines and now we are going to make further modifications and then put it together with the rest of the stack with the external tank and the solid rocket boosters and we will see how it does going to orbit and coming back. So I'll show you how I do that. The first thing we need to do actually is to get the RCS thrusters on. I didn't do that before and I will do that now so those are under utility and I'm gonna place, use the Place Anywhere Linear RCS ports because uh, they'll look a little bit better. And we don't need the super powerful Veer governors. Uh, those have uh, 12 kilonewtons all together, but they use the methane and oxidizer. We're carrying mob propellants, so we need to use these. And one kilonewton will be enough in general. Uh, you don't want to use anything too powerful because it will guzzle the propellant. So we're putting them basically in the slots where the RCS thrusters actually are. And we need to angle them properly, otherwise they're not going to work the way the real ones do. And we want black color here. And we'll just have black, black, art, and okay, and... These are to push the shuttle down primarily. So we're going to tuck those in a little bit. Usually the RCS thrusters do not mind being tucked into things. I say usually because you never know what's going to happen. But yeah, uh, it'll be sufficiently inconspicuous. When you zoom in you can sort of see, but if you want to tuck them in more than that, that is a possibility. But I also need to make sure that we can duplicate them so that I can bring them to other locations. Oops. And we need to do these forward ones. These will push the shuttle back. So we would like them pointing through the center of mass. But um, realistically, sort of angled up like that. But that means that they won't fire right through the center of mass. So they're not going to be perfect. None of the shuttle's RCS thrusters are placed like in perfect balance. Because they needed to place them where it was convenient as well. So... Not perfect, but that's the idea. Now there's these on the side here, so we do need to symmetrize, and then there's two like that. And then these are pointing down to push the shuttle up. But they can't point straight down, otherwise they'll be clipping the body. And that basically does it for the forward thrusters. Now the ones in the back are on the OMS pods here. And we'll want some kind of truss to extend them uh, beyond the wing, basically. And I think this micro truss is the way to go. And we want us to shift these OMS engines a little bit, oops, a little bit like that. Okay, something like that. And then I'll copy one of the thrusters from up here, one of the center ones. And we want thrusters that will push us forward. Just like that. And then thrusters that will push us down. Like that. Thrusters that will push us up. Oop. This is all for docking, really. And then thrusters that will push us to the side. And that'll take care of it. So it's two per, and that's our RCS thrusters, so I'll just save that. So now I'm going to tuck the gear in, and we're going to change orientation. So, going workspace that ways, and hopefully when I select launch pad, it'll stay that way. But, yeah, who knows. Alright, so we are now in this orientation, and hopefully I've convinced... Uh, actually, I haven't convinced it. You see how the camera's moving? It, uh, when I'm holding down the middle mouse button, it should be going up and down when we're in this orientation. Unfortunately, it's still going in plane mode, which is side to side. So I'm gonna save it uh, shuttle stack. And I'm going to then go out of the VAB and come back in to get the orientation right. And now when I move the middle mouse button, uh, I don't move the middle mouse button, I hold the middle mouse button, it goes like this. So that's the orientation we want. Okay, so 
we have a decoupler. Relatively high on the shuttle here. And then we have the external tank. So the external tank we are going to make fit uh, this there's a nose cone that looks right, this protective rocket nose cone. It's pretty heavy, but actually we want it heavy in this case. Uh, in a previous video I noted that it's 5 tons, and then the cargo bay that's sort of the same size, under payloads, this one is only 1 ton. I'm going like, well, I mean it's the same diameter, and it's a cargo bay too. Why wouldn't you want to use the 1 ton instead of the 5 ton? But in this particular case, we want to use the 5 ton one because we need the mass as high up as possible. In fact, we are going to be tucking extra mod propellant tanks in the nose to bring the center of mass higher up. And the goal of getting the center of mass higher up is so that the engines will point through it consistently as the tank drains. In real life, what happens is that the tank at the top is actually the oxygen tank, and oxygen is much, much denser than hydrogen. So the most of the tank is a hydrogen tank, but hydrogen is not very dense, so that's a very light tank actually. But the oxygen tank at the top is extremely heavy, and so the center mass stays high, and since the center mass stays high, the engines can consistently point through it, even as the external tank drains. If you want to, you could decide to keep the shuttle tanks empty, and then use the mop propellant tanks that we got to tuck into the external tank. And then once the external tank is done, before you separate it, use these tanks to fill up the shuttle's own fuel. And that way you can get the maximum amount of payload capacity up to orbit. I'm not going to generally do that because already the shuttle is pretty OP. Um, but if you really find yourself pressed to get the payload that you want up, then that would be a way to go. We want cryogenic orange. I guess that's close enough. Okay, it is on the decoupler correctly. And then we'll just put two of these mob propellant tanks on the top. And then we're going to tuck them inside the nose cone. Like that. Okay, and then we're gonna have another orange tank at the bottom but not as big one. Uh, probably not that big. Maybe a little bit more. We don't really have a good round bottom sort of thing. I think this will do for now. Okay, and you can see where the center mass is right now, okay? And when we drain these tanks, we'll see where they are. And if you really want to be good about it, you'll pay attention to that. You'll empty these tanks on the external tank and then get a reread of the center of mass and make sure that the engines can point through that. So the center of thrust, you can see the center of thrust line. Now it's taking into consideration the OMS engines as well, but they're really, really weak, so probably won't matter. You could get a ruler up to your screen and make sure that center thrust points through that center mass with a wiggle room because the engines can gimbal. But that's the goal. If we had fuel priority, that would be another way to do things. Uh, though it probably wouldn't be enough. And with fuel priority, what you would do is you would have the, the top tank drain last. So you could do it that way. Now you'll notice that with the full tanks, uh, the center of mass definitely does not look like it's anywhere near the center of thrust, but that's okay initially at the start. And that is because we're going to put the boosters on. And while the boosters are on, it, this can be off. Uh, it's just that it needs to shift into the right position by the time the boosters go off. And if your stack starts flipping right when the boosters separate or lose thrust, it's because you haven't drained enough fuel in the external tank to keep the balance. And we'll see that maybe. Need to pay attention to that. So there's two main points when the shuttle can flip out because of the center mass and center of thrust. It's when the boosters go out and then when you get really close to orbit. So uh, we just need to get the connections between the external tank and the shuttle. First of all, struts. So we definitely want struts and we want them in a pair 
right near that, and then we also want them down below. I don't know if we want orange struts, but we can do orange struts. They show up better, and so if they're disconnected, we'll see that. And then also the fuel line. You must remember the fuel line. And this should not be duplicated. So, just one. Now we need sufficiently powerful boosters so that that center of thrust gets pulled over to this side pretty decisively. And ideally gimbling boosters. And so we really only have the Clydesdales. I mean, I would like bigger boosters, uh, but this is what we've got. And they have only one degree of gimbal. So we'll have to deal with it. Now, they definitely don't need to be orange, so let's change our color. Uh, slightly off-white. And I'll go with just regular radial symmetry for these. The nozzles, the bottom nozzles of the boosters extend below the shuttle. And actually the whole stack in real life is held by the boosters. And then nose cone wise we don't have a lot of choice. Uh, we only add this size for that. And maybe you could use a pointy fuel tank. Like that. But it's also not quite the right shape so I'll just stick to these. Next up, we're going to have struts between the boosters and the external tank. And I'll have snap on for that. And I'm putting four per booster. Okay, and then the separatrons. So these separatron mini motors. And here's, here's the thing. Uh, you don't want to just push it away from the external tank like that. You know, you might want to put it like that, but that risks hitting the shuttle wing as well. Uh, of course, we're going to have another one on the other side and everything, but just in case, uh, we want to offset it like that, and that will push it away from the shuttle wings a little bit better. So, and we'll have the bottom ones in line with that. There can also be ones on the nose cone to push it down. So, we're actually pushing it away you can see how it is, pushing it away not just from the external tank, but also from the wing. If you want to put one on the nose cone, also make sure that that's offset, so it's not like this. It's not over here, but rather in between the two, so a little bit more like over here. Alright, and then finally the launch clamps. Um, I feel like the boosters are a little bit low. Let's move those up just a tad. It's just below the shuttle. So now we can see the center of thrust is very much over here instead of with the shuttle engines. The gimbling of the engines over here will have to help. One of the reasons your shuttle might be wobbly off the pad is because in real life the boosters have 7 degrees of gimbal so they could easily deal with this uh, center of thrust being offset by that much all on their own. But here we only have 1 degree of gimbal on these so it's a little bit harder for them to deal with it with this gap and it's all the shuttle engines trying to manage it and that tends to make things a little bit wobbly. So launch clamps, we'll, we'll have the boosters be on a separate thing from the SSMEs eventually but let's... Uh, checking the Delta V by the way, you'll notice uh, we have a lot of Delta V in the shuttle right now but that's because we have no payload. We should just put a dummy payload in. And so, you tend to want to put the payloads in the back, by preference. And if you bring something down, bring it down in the back. And you'll have an 18 ton tank plus a 9 ton tank for a total of 27, which is a lot for the shuttle to bring up. And we can't lock tanks, but we can certainly make sure that there's no crossfeed through these. And hopefully that'll work out. You could strut payloads to the bay, but we'll check that it's not wiggling that much, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, we could add struts if it ends up wiggling too much. And I don't want docking acquiring force, otherwise it'll immediately dock back when we try to separate it. Okay, so no fuel crossfeed on those. This does 
sort of contradict the we want the center of mass as high as possible thing. But that's because once the shuttle is on its own, if for some reason we need to bring the payload back down, like we need to abort and come back to the runway or something like that, uh, you don't want the shuttle to be too nose heavy. The center mass of the shuttle is way back here already, so having the payload here is better. If you put the payload in front, uh, it's going to end up being nose heavy and you won't be able to pull up. And just for safety's sake, in real life they are, they are only on the boosters, but we will put some on the shuttle as well. Like that. This is all for safety's sake. Now we might be rotated wrong for the pad. But we'll see. First we have to check that everything doesn't immediately fall off. Boosters at the same time as launch clamps. SSMEs first, and then that's all right. Okay, let's see how it looks outside. Oh, I forgot to fill up its own mop propellant tanks, I bet, because we seem to have some missing here, and it, well, it doesn't show like that. Okay, well, let me just check that inside, but um, roll wise, I guess this is all right. Um, which way is. No, we probably want to be 90 degrees off from this. We underfueled them for the test flight. Or, of course, we could use the tanks in the external tank to fill it up, but we won't do that this time. And I generally won't do that. Ah, uh, structural linkage between the metamorph and the cargo bay. Let me just time warp to morning anyway. I won't add anything just yet, but maybe we need extra struts on the wing. Oh... Uh, it's bouncing a lot, isn't it? What happened there? It went... It, all the launch clamps decided to release or something, because... Vessel destroyed. I mean, it seems like... Oh yeah, we, we definitely lost the wing there. Well, shucks. So much for flight testing. Well, it certainly doesn't solve anything. Um, let me just zoom out here. Yeah, that is basically how we want it. But we could rotate it. I mean, no, we, we should have the shuttle facing the tower. Maybe that's what it's arguing about. Maybe if we ha have the shuttle facing the tower so that the connects work like that. It's not like this pad was built for the shuttle anyway, but maybe then it'll be better? I don't know. I'm basically trying whatever I can to make this work. It does like it like this. <laughs> okay. Important piece of information. It likes it like this. It didn't like it the other way around. The wing doesn't break off in this orientation. Well, important piece of information. Um, I, I, we will still have to roll, it looks like, I think. Okay, well, let's give it a go. Throttle up. Oh, throttle is up. And ignition. And launch. Whoa! Okay. Well, uh, and everything went bad. Okay. Um, our boosters... I think I like the boosters first, then release the clamps. Because they take some time to get up to full thrust around here, when in real life they don't. Yep, pretty consistently this orientation works when the other one doesn't. Interesting. Okay, and boosters, and then uh, let's let's draw down and then go up. Uh, it's still going this way. Okay, well that's not what I want. That's not what I want. <laughs> we'll try and pull the prograde vector to straight up. First. 
we can adjust the balance a little bit, but the fact that we have such weak boosters is a problem. But we really need to be able to lift off. <laughs> so we can't uh, reduce the shuttle side very much. I guess I'll increase it now. Because otherwise we don't have enough thrust weight ratio. I'm gonna try and roll, but it's tough. Uh, after so long not having done the shuttle in stock, I've lost the fuel for it from the early flights. I'm trying to roll it here. I got sort of a pattern with it before. Not that that pattern will work great here in this version. It really doesn't want to roll and we're running out of SRB fuel. Okay, separation. Oh, still cunning at the wings. We need the SRBs to last longer, actually. We need them to last much longer. We need to have them actually be thrust limited a little bit. Oh, we need to underfuel the external tank, because now we're losing speed here. And we really have too much delta V according to that. Okay, well, we need to make some adjustments here. This needs to be a little bit better balanced. I think we have too much fuel. I think what's happened is... I don't think I should have and uh, should have put fuel in the bottom tanks on the external tank. We should have just had those for show. I think these are just for show here. So we'll just empty these, and that'll probably fix it. I'm just aiming to get how much the shuttle actually launched with. And if we empty those tanks, that means there's less mass on this side, which means it'll tend less to this side, which is probably a good thing. So that'll help. But we also need to reduce the thrust on this. Right now, it says that our... Let's say we put the SRBs in the same stage as here. 1.25, so it's not really great, the thrust to weight ratio. Let's keep an eye on that as we thrust limit the Clydesdales so that we have them last for longer. So we can't do it that much. Um, I think I'll accept that, but that's a really bare minimum kind of thing. We need to get past the speed of sound with them, ideally to about 500 meters per second. I don't think having them in their separate stage helped much, so we'll keep it like that. Uh, maybe I should test it with a little bit less. The shuttle actually didn't carry 27 tons to orbit, but we'll try it like this. It's amazing how just pad orientation seems to make a huge difference. Okay, so yeah, we are underfueled now. And launch. I mean, ignition. And launch. Whoa, okay. we're still doing this, though. Oh, uh, we, we need to move those clamps lower, I think. But, yeah, actually, maybe igniting the boosters first was a better idea. <laughs> that was... Okay, let's move these lower. And we still want them in that. As low as possible will be good. Okay, starting... Ignition and launch and oh you just oh and then clamps and I'm gonna initially pull up here. Just gotta pull up like this. Okay. No, we just want the prograde vector up, up, up. Uh I was trying to ro start rolling, but now we're rolling the wrong way. I finished rolling almost, almost. Okay, 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 we've rolled, but we're sort of off on our heading. It's fine, it's fine. Alright, we'll take this heading. 
we'll take the setting for now. Gosh. We are past the speed of sound. So that was one goal. And if you want the boosters to separate cleanly, you better be pointing at the prograde vector, otherwise they'll go with the prograde vector, not with you where you're pointing. So, separate. Oh, I think they still took a... well, no, they didn't take a wing, but they, uh, hit a wing. Uh, uh, it's not good... oh... It's better to wait until, like, 30 kilometers before trying to maneuver at all. Okay, I just need more practice, let's try that again. Delta VYs were okay. Maybe I should even underfuel the tank a bit. Oh, um, these guys are the wrong way. Oh, we should have them in. I I made a mistake. Uh, we should have these in the the symmetry. In fact. Okay, now with mirror symmetry, the Cepatrons are right. I shouldn't have done radial in the first place. Okay. And we need to restrut. Okay. Ignition. Other ignition. And launch. Uh, come on. Come on. Okay. Prograde vector is sort of going up. <laughs> Do that first. Do that first. Okay, then roll, then roll. I'm staring at the nav ball. I'm not even looking at the shuttle, I'm staring at the nav ball completely. Okay, we've rolled. It's, it's a clean sort of thing right now. Clean sort of thing right now. At least cleaner than it has been. I'm going pretty steeply here. Just in case. This will allow us to have better balance when the booster is set. But yeah, I generally like to have booster set around 500 meters per second or more. So that's good. Okay, booster set. And this time they cleared the wings because I got the separatrons right. Yep, mirror symmetry. And now when the booster set, you see we're not losing speed. We're not gaining speed much, but we're not losing speed. So that's good too. Well, okay, we lost a little bit. But anyway, it's close enough. It's close enough. And just point a prograde until we get to 30 kilometers. And then try and flatten out. So we'll try and flatten out now. We'll also try and correct that inclination. Delta V-wise, we've got plenty, even under fueling the external tank there. We can just go flat if we can. I am trying to correct our path because that will make it easier to get back to the KSC on re-entry. Okay, we are in space. It's a little bit off here as far as balance is concerned. When I let go of it, SAS has a little bit of trouble. We may have to pitch down, first of all, because the shell engines are tilted. So actually, this is closer to flat. Uh, well, actually, t uh, down 10 degrees would be flat. But also, our apoapsis is getting a little bit high. Well, uh, that's sooner than I expected, but all right. We can work on our efficiency eventually. Let's just flip around. If it can, I'll turn on the RCS. Plenty of time to apoapsis here. Okay, so separation, yep. K to push up, OMS engines.
they will take some time to do everything. So we have to give them some time. Let me open the cargo bay. I should have action grouped that so that both bays open at the same time. And yeah, people said that they liked the five segment version, so we have the five segment version. And I just want to make sure, yes, the payload has its full fuel. So we are carrying the 27 tons we were supposed to. If you want to be super realistic, you can disable the reaction wheel in the cockpit, but I don't necessarily recommend that in stock. Okay, we are in orbit here and I'm trying to figure out the camera. Let me just cut that for now. Um, we'll actually deorbit the payload, so... Uh, let me just circularize. We were a little bit late in getting our periapsis, so... I'm just gonna go around to the apoapsis, get to a better circular orbit for our eventual return. I also need to waste some fuel. Remember, we only plan the center mass and center lift based on almost being empty. We want to come down with about 1.2 tons. Or at the end, be flying with 1.2 tons when we land. So, and that's of the mod propellant. So we have 8 tons right now. We need to waste some. Now, some of it is necessary for retro burn. And I think... Basically, by the time we retroburn for re-entry, we want to be at under 5 tons. Oh no, I time warp- I tried to- Oh no, I tried to time warp while time- uh, while doing the burn and it destroyed me. I just tried to do period- I thought maybe fizz warp would work. But then we encountered a very, very high G-force that plunged us right into the center of Kerbin. Alright, well I'll try and get better at this. Um, <laughs> we'll try and do the re-entry test and I'll try and get the launch a little bit better. Um, I'll just- that looked cool, they said. It didn't look cool at all, it just went black. And then it's automatically- I didn't even click anything. It's automatically going back to... The, hmm. Anyway. Okay, I've had enough. <laughs> I've had enough. So, yeah. I'll try and do the launch and recovery in a subsequent video. Clearly, it, uh, it has tricks up its sleeve. It has tricks up its sleeve to cause problems for me. Okay, anyway, so for now, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.